So just the other day, Atomic Shrimp passed 16,000 subscribers. That's a milestone for me. I know that's not as impressive as some of the other channels you probably subscribe to. But even so, I'm very grateful to all of you for subscribing and supporting my channel. Thanks ever so much for your support. I hope you'll stay with me because we've got more great content to come. In other channel news, I imagine you may have seen something about this new monetization scheme that YouTube is doing where they've implemented a machine learning algorithm which is demonetizing everybody's videos shortly after upload. That's been happening to me too. And in fact, what tends to happen is it hits me right at the peak views. So I upload a video and I publish it and about 12 hours later it demonetizes I can appeal and my appeal is always upheld because my content is always advertiser friendly and family friendly but by that time the peak of views has finished and so I'm losing out on the monetization of views during that peak initial view. My, a lot of my videos only get a couple of hundred views anyway. So there's been a lot of fuss about this monetization thing and a lot of people saying it's a conspiracy whether it's picking on certain YouTubers or whatever. I don't know. I actually think it's probably just a badly trained algorithm and it'll need to improve in the future. So I'm not going to make a fuss about it. So here's what I'm actually going to do. It's going to change the profile of the way I release videos. It's probably going to be a little bit more spread over time now because what I'll do is I'll create all of my content at the weekend when I have most of my free time. I'll upload it and then I'll wait and see what the algorithm does. Anything that gets demonetized, I get a chance to appeal and get that reverted and remonetized and then I can publish it during the week. If you feel like you might maybe miss out on something, I'd encourage you to click that little bell thing down there next to the subscribe button because that will notify you when I publish a new video. Anyway, thanks again for being there, for being interested in my content and for watching my videos. Okay, now I thought this was interesting. I picked this up in just Sainsbury's yesterday. This is a Japanese sparkling soft drink, Ramune, which is lemonade, fizzy lemonade. But the thing I thought was particularly interesting is that this comes in a CODS bottle. Now, I'll put links in the description if you don't know what a CODS bottle is, but this is a very, very old fashioned style of bottle where a marble is used to seal the top and the marble is held in place by the pressure of the carbonated drink. So anyway, it's not weird stuff in a can, so it doesn't get its own video, but I thought it was interesting enough to show you. So let's open it up and see what we got inside. So there's a little tab thing there. I don't know if we, I don't really know how we do this, so I'm gonna just assume that we take this plastic off of here. Yes, okay. And there we go, there is the marble there. And I don't know how we're actually meant to take that. I guess we're meant to press that down with something. Get something smaller, maybe the handle of a wooden spoon. Okay, so in order to get that unsealed, yeah, we press that down. And there is the marble rolling around inside there. And there are two little dimples here, which is designed to catch that marble and stop it rolling back and resealing the top. So anyway, I guess we ought to give it a little taste. Okay, it's a faintly lemon flavoured, faintly sweet carbonated drink, which in the UK we would call lemonade. Now I know lemonade is a different thing in some places of the world, but that's what we call lemonade here in the UK. And I believe that's in fact where the, where the name Ramune comes from. It's a sort of Japanese version of the word lemonade. So this design has been around for quite some time. And I'll put some information on the screen as to the inventor um, whose name was Hiram Codd. He was an engineer, I believe, and he, um, he patented this design. And vendors of mineral water used to license this from him uh, so that uh, they could sell their mineral water in this special bottle. So there we go. I just thought that was really interesting that this design has survived to the modern day. What a cool thing. Now, this bottle is not exactly per Hiram Codd's original design because... It actually has a wide neck that's closed by this plastic and silicone rubber cap. And so as a result, I was able to cut that off and retrieve the marble. So there we go. I'll keep that bit.
So a little while back I made this wooden spoon, my first ever attempt at carving a spoon. And it's wonky and weird and I actually really like it. However, in use, what's happened is the grain has raised a little bit. Now part of that's because oak probably just isn't the best material to make wooden spoons from. But it is also completely normal for the grain to raise a little bit when wooden spoons are used. And all you have to do is so get soaked, dry it out, and then we'll just go over it with a little bit of very fine sandpaper, this 240 grit sandpaper. We'll just take off those rough bits. And eventually we will get to sort of an equilibrium point where the grain doesn't raise anymore. A few more tries like that. And then eventually we'll end up with a thing that stays relatively smooth even when it gets wet. But anyway, I didn't bring you here to watch me sanding this spoon. I actually brought you here to watch me sand this spoon, which is the big brother. So I had another go. I found a nice piece of, it's a piece from the same oak log, but it had a bend in it. And so I've actually utilized that bend. So the grain here runs round and gives it a little bit of a bend in the handle there. And this is more of a ladle, I suppose. So we're just gonna clean this up today and give it a sand. Now this one I sanded all by hand using abrasive paper, completely by hand, no machine tools, and that was hard work. So for this one, especially as it's bigger, I'm gonna break out the electric drill and the rotary sanding flap wheels, I think, and we'll try to bring it into some sort of neat and tidy order that way. Okay, now this machine is not in any way melodious in operation and it's quite a windy day today so please enjoy this nice music instead.
So that'll do for now, I think. So that's the original spoon, and that's the big brother. This one is definitely much more of a label. I think that could possibly be used for serving stew or something like that. So I'm going to stop there for today. But what I'm going to do is give that a good soak and then let the grain raise and then sand it back a few times. And I'll repeat that several times until the grain settles down and finds its equilibrium. So there we go. That's my second wonky wooden spoon. I hope it's been interesting to watch. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.